Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kevin Benedict. I'm SAP Mentor and Enterprise Mobility Analyst. And I have with me as guest today, Mike Peterson, who's the Vice President of Product Marketing at Scion. Thank you for joining us today, Mike. Well, thanks for having me on, Kevin. So you guys um, create and develop various ruggedized and industrial-grade smartphones and um, purpose-built uh, industrial-grade mobile devices for scanning and RFID and all kinds of other things, if I understand it right. That's exactly right, and I would even expand it a little bit beyond that, where most of our handheld devices are a true handheld computer today in, in the truest sense of the form. Very good. So why don't you share with the audience, I mean, many of the folks that are listening today are from large enterprises. They may run SAP or Oracle or things in the background, and they're familiar with things like BlackBerry and iPhone and Android devices and things. And um, unless they've been outside and working in field services or proof of delivery or some of these other service-based areas, they may not be as familiar with Scion and the area that you guys address. So what I would like to do today, if it's okay with you, is really focus on what does a large enterprise need to know about Scion and where does Scion fit in and when should they be thinking about you guys, Mike? Well, a great question, Kevin, and the, and the fact of the matter is Scion is actually a fairly old company. We've been around between Scion and TechLogix, the, our sister company that we merged together a decade ago. The two of us have been around for 30 or 40 years, so we're certainly not new to the high-tech sector. However, the majority of all of our business over the last 15 to 20 years has been in the B2B sector. And so if you're used to buying, uh, looking at mobile devices, the handhelds and Blackberries and iPhones and Android, you're not going to see our name pop up. Okay. However, if you're used to supply chain logistics or ports or yards or all of the, uh, the great applications of mobile devices that happen beyond the consumer segment, we've been a, a mainstay for, uh, for decades. I think one of the questions you're probably asking is what's the difference between what Scion delivers in a device and what could I get from a typical iPhone or a BlackBerry or Android device with a high-definition camera on it? Absolutely. And, Talk to us about that. Well, and it's a really interesting time for, for us right now because 10 years ago, on the one hand, you had uh, cell phones, which were very consumer-esque in most respects, and you had our devices, which tended to be uh, quite large, um, about four or five times the size of a typical handheld device today that we're, we're accustomed to, and they had a handle on them and they had a trigger on them, and they were used in warehouses and factories. A lot of it was related to scanning, barcode scanning, 2D barcode scanning, RFID readers, and it was a very much a, a back office application, and, uh, and the devices were incredibly durable because they were used to being dropped and banged around and rained on and, and dropped off the wings of airplanes as they sat on the tarmac. Today what's interesting though is there's starting to become a merger between the two. As cell phones merge into smartphones and smartphones start to gain the flexibility to do some very interesting things, whether it's scanning through an imager or a camera or giving fuller access to, to, to the cloud or the internet, um, they start to actually enable users to do some of the things that our products were designed to do a decade ago. And that's actually great news for businesses and it's great news for consumers because our whole goal has always been to get real-time information to and from the field. Consumers are benefiting from that same thing today where they can get real-time information to, uh, to what they need to know and where, and if they need to take a picture of it, that's great. Right. But what we're starting to see is an emergence of more and more people in field services and in light-duty applications that can benefit from some of the typical applications that we've been accustomed to delivering, uh, you know, as I said, for a decade. Right. I think know. one of the things that differentiates uh, the classical commercial device 
or consumer device from a truly ruggedized device are probably two things. The first is the level of durability. Okay. We test our products to what's called an IP certification. And most of our products are an IP54, an IP65, an IP67, meaning you can drop it from about six feet. You can submerge it underwater for up to 30 minutes. It, it's uh, protected against uh, jet streams of water and, uh, and rain and, and drop tests and a number of things and dust intrusion. If you put any traditional Android device or iPhone or BlackBerry through those rigors, they wouldn't last but uh, only a fraction of the test. They're just not designed to go into those environments. Absolutely. So the level of ruggedization is, is much more important in our devices. And we're learning how to make those devices smaller and smaller and still give the same level of organization. And for us, it's twofold. The first part is reducing the total cost of ownership. Because when a product breaks, it's expensive to replace it. But more importantly, you have downtime for that end user. You have a really expensive person in the field who's trying to meet a customer call or uh, uh, fix an electrical line or repair a valve somewhere. And if they don't have the right access to the right information or they miss an appointment, you've, you've missed a customer commitment and you've missed uh, your, uh, it's probably impacting your P&L. Oh, absolutely. That's generally the most expensive aspect. So we're trying to prevent that from happening first and foremost. Secondly, so you, as technologies so, change, yeah. we're able to adapt our technologies such that we can upgrade them to the latest RFID technologies, the latest imager technologies, the latest scanning technologies. So ruggedization is one big chunk of it. The second aspect of our products that differs from a commercial device or consumer device, I should say, is our imaging technology. If you have an Android or an iPhone or a BlackBerry and you can take a picture with it, even though it's a high-resolution camera, it does not quickly, it cannot quickly look at a barcode and de decipher what that actually is. Almost all of our products have either an RFID reader in it or an imager in it such that we can look at those codes and decipher them quickly in the fraction of a second so that you can do a lot of scanning or an R a lot of RFID reading quickly. Some consumer cell phones can do that, but it takes them a long time, and you'd never want to use that device to do that uh, repetitive operation hundreds of times a day. Not only that, I can see that my battery would run dead very quickly. That's exactly right. Our batteries, uh, for instance, our Omni family, which is our uh, kind of our mainstay, has around a 5,000 milliamp hour battery on it, which is two to three times the size of a traditional consumer battery. And if you have a laser scanner, we're in the midst of the scanning beam, not unlike the technology you see in your local checkout counter, that consumes a lot more energy than you would ever be able to throw at it from a consumer device.